it's about that time. Serious, serious. What's happening in your city? Serious, serious. Serious, serious. You got love for your city? Serious, serious. And can you believe it? Another week of City Views is upon us. Thank you for joining us tonight for another episode. And I want to welcome you to the show and also my wonderful co-host. I'm so blessed to be able to work with two such lovely, talented, and beautiful ladies. I look forward every week to coming to this show for a little um, eye candy, as it were. <laughs> wow. So please welcome my lovely co-host, Karen Thomas and Carice Villarol. Hi, everyone. And uh, we have a guest with us this evening, Mark Pernicki from the Torrington Youth Services Bureau. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you, sir. How are you today? No doubt about it, bro. This is one of those days. I mean, you kind of, the sky's kind of opened up a little later on in the afternoon, yeah. and you kind of got that, you know, kind of like late Indian summer feeling kind of going on, you and know? A little bit of breeze. A little bit of breeze. Yeah. It wasn't as humid. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. I mean, all day today, I wasn't sure if to open my windows or put the AC on. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was opening my windows for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that time of the year, and. Um, a lot of great things going on. My and favorite time of the year. Pumpkins yes. and fires Indeed. and, and gourds. gourds and Very apple nice. pie yeah. and all kinds of fabulousness. <clears throat> so, yeah, good stuff <clears throat> happening. And, um, two, it's very important that um, we understand and realize that um, uh, sports is kind of um, making it happen. Yes. ESPN, mm -hmm. yes, return sir. to the airwaves. Uh, a little bit too late, but I guess better late than never, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was boiling mad for a couple weeks there. It's like, man, come on, guys. You can't be, be, you can't be that cheap. You know, we didn't get to see the U.S. Open and Coco Grass no, win. No. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, I mean, greed runs amok, you know? You yes, had us sit and talk to each other. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. imagine that. Oh, no, I can't imagine that. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Um, but uh, <laughs> while we're talking, let's uh, take care of some business. Yes. And uh, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors, and we want to thank them. Uh, and you guys will have to bear with me. I just had a tooth pulled, so oh. I'm, you know, like... That's why you have chipmunk cheeks. Well, yeah, but if I start drooling, you guys will, you know. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Get it's your napkin. You know, we'll, we'll wipe, it right. <laughs> wipe it up. You guys always got my back. I so appreciate oh. that. Uh, let's give a shout out to our big city sponsors for City Views. Toth Insurance Agency, uh, located at 1151 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. They can be reached at 860 four nine six seven 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 one or at toth t o t h i n s at optonline dot net also mel brickman in health services located at 16 mcdermott avenue suite number one in torrington connecticut you better call mel better call mel he can be reached at 860-307-1128 and uh, his contact is health markets dot com backslash local dash health dash i n s also brooks todd and mcneil insurance 69 water street torrington connecticut keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839 that's a long time wow, that's a long time 
They can be reached at 860-598-8753 or at brookstoddmcneil.com. And lastly, Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck, Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington. Uh, pediatric care for over 50 years. Their contact information is 860-482-8177 or TorringtonPediatrics.com. And we're so grateful to our sponsors for their support yes. and uh, making sure that City Views goes on each and every week. You got it. And uh, a lot of great things going on. And one of those things that I want to talk about today, even with my <clears throat> somewhat uh, altered state here, um, Corice, <laughs> you're doing some like fantastic stuff. And uh, she was on television this morning. Mass was Mass Appeal. Yes, Mass Appeal. Mass Appeal. Mass Appeal. Mass Appeal. It yes. was, you know, one of them shows over in Massachusetts. I guess on lifestyle like, show. That's why they call she it. She was fabulous. That's why they call oh, it Mass Appeal because it's from Massachusetts. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and Karen, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, see, we got teamwork here. Yes, okay? we do. Great you know, teamwork. We work together. Yes, we work all together. Of us. That's and, what we uh, do. Karen um, went out on a limb and made sure that uh, Corice's Declaration of Human Rights um, is being promoted. And uh, I want to take this time to read something for, for you all. Uh, it's Corice's latest publication. Uh, it's entitled Coco's Carnival Connection. Once upon a time, in a land of sunshine, steel pan, and calypso, there lived a girl named Coco. She grew up on the beautiful island of Trinidad, nestled in the heart of the Caribbean. Trinidad was a place of vibrant colors, the crystal blue Caribbean sea, the sweet melodies of calypso and soca music, and the birthplace of carnival and the steel pan. Coco had many friends on the island, and together they would dance, laugh, and enjoy the festivities of the yearly carnival. It was a magical time when the whole island came alive with music, dance, and colorful costumes. Coco loved every minute of it, and she cherished the memories she made during carnival time. It was a special time that she got to dress up in beads and bows and colorful makeup. One day when Coco was 12 years old, she had to bid farewell to her friends and the familiar sights of Trinidad. Her mother and siblings were moving to the United States, where new adventures awaited them. Coco was excited because she had heard stories about snow and the enchanting Disney World. Coco and her family first moved to Florida, the home of Disney World, but longed to see snow, and they eventually made the move to North Connecticut. Life in the United States was different and exciting, but it didn't have the same Caribbean charm as Trinidad. Coco missed the warm sun on her face, the rhythmic beats of the steel pan, and the feeling of being surrounded by her culture. As she grew older, the memories of her homeland became more vivid, and she longed to return to the place she loved. Finally, when Coco turned 16, her mother surprised her with an extraordinary gift. They were going back to Trinidad for Carnival's Coco. Heart danced with joy as she landed on the familiar island soil. The air was filled with excitement and anticipation as the Carnival festivities were about to begin. The moment Coco stepped onto the streets of Trinidad during Carnival, she felt an overwhelming sense of belonging. The vibrant colors of the costumes, the cheerful sounds of the steel pan, and the infectious, infectious rhythm of the soca music made her heart sing. It was a feeling she had missed so much. Coco and her mother joined the revelers, dancing and celebrating with the locals. They adorned themselves in dazzling costumes, adorned with feathers, sequins, and beads. Coco's smile was brighter than the sun as she twirled and swayed to the rhythm of the music. Throughout the carnival, Coco discovered a unique connection not only to her culture, but also to her family's roots. She learned the stories behind each dance, song, and costume, connecting her even more deeply to the traditions of her ancestors. You see, carnival is not just about feathers and beads. Carnival is about hope and new beginnings. It takes place on the Monday and Tuesday before Ash Wednesday every year. As the carnival came to an end, Coco knew that this experience would stay with her forever. 
It had taught her the importance of embracing her heritage and cherishing the memories of her homeland, no matter where life took her. Now, back in the United States, Coco found a way to keep her Trinidad spirit alive. She started a carnival celebration with her friends and community. Coco shared her love for the Caribbean culture with others, spreading joy and keeping the essence of carnival alive in her new home. And so, every year, Coco's carnival connection continued to thrive, bridging the gap between two worlds and bringing a piece of the Caribbean magic to the United States. Written by Corice Villarol. <laughs> that is so fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> is, there, is there a little bit of autobiographical um, uh, sentiments going is, on is, there? Is There's a lot. Coco? Yes, it is. Uh, I thought so. <laughs> I love them. All my nephews and nieces and my friends' um, kids all call me Coco. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And nice. that's exactly my story right there. Um, that's amazing. And I decided to write it because with the, the Screen Actors Guild on strike, mm -hmm. as you know, I have been out of work, no acting. But as an actor, um, you can't stifle someone's creativity. Right. You just find different outlets. Right. And um, I've decided to find different outlets for my my voice. Perfect. From from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and becoming a consultant to now writing my own children's stories. I love yeah. that. <laughs> I'm going to hook you up with a publisher if you don't have one. She's I do a, not. I have a friend who, and we will get you all hooked up. So that's oh, amazing. I love it. Thank you. This is great. So awesome. this morning on the Lifestyle Show, uh, this afternoon going over a book, to this evening on local cable. Like yeah. This is a celebrity right <laughs> here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. She is, she is a celebrity. Um, and also on uh, Wednesday, uh, September 20th, uh, you're going to be giving a presentation of the Declaration of Human Rights um, in collaboration with uh, Culture for a Cause. Uh, and that's going to be held at uh, the Chamber of Commerce, 159 Field Street. And uh, that should be a, a very worthwhile event where we can hear your declaration uh, in person mm -hmm. and we can actually talk to you about it, ask questions, because I think um, a lot of people aren't aware of the Declaration and if they were aware of the Declaration, they would understand much more fully um, the premise of our Constitution right. and, and how those uh, ideas uh, and concepts uh, were to be uh, sustained throughout, throughout the decades. So uh, I think it's worthwhile for uh, anyone to, uh, to check out this because they'll have a much better understanding of how our system works. Correct. Or Very true. Or should I say, supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And just an, an understanding about of um, community and, and, and interacting with one another and, and how to accept people's differences, right. I think is very important. And um, just, you know, it's the 75th anniversary of the Declaration. It was written 75 years ago. Um, and to just bring that to the forefront and speak about it more and get acceptance for, um, you know, with wars all over the world, people are flocking to the U.S. and, and getting people to understand that, um, you know, one of the articles in the Declaration talks about um, you have the right to seek refuge outside of your own country or in your own country if you need to feel safe, and that's fine. That is quite fine. I mean, no one's here. No one's coming in to steal someone else's job or right. anything like that. They're just seeking refuge. And, and if someone really, truly understood that, like why get to the bottom root of why someone's moving, mm -hmm. um, I think they would show more compassion. So, mm -hmm. Remember, send me all your tired, huddled masses, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. It's a Statue of Liberty That's right. for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I thought you meant you because I was going to get your address <laughs> next. And uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> P.O. Box, <laughs> Torrington, Connecticut. See what I have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen. See, I, I, I treat you guys so nice, give you all, I, I sh, you know, 
Just compliments I'm just galore. having fun. <laughs> but you're having fun at my expense. I have feelings too, Karen. I know that, but the hat is where we drew well, the see, line. See, see, I knew this was coming. Yankees. I knew this was coming. Oh, my goodness. I knew this was coming. Boston. I knew this was coming. Boston. I'm They're both Boston cellar hat. dwellers. So. I need you to wear a Boston hat next week. Well, <laughs> the next time, the next time I... <laughs> the next time I wear my Yankee hat, okay, you will probably see Shoha Otani's name on it. Because that's what's happening. Okay. That's what's happening, okay? All right, Cashman all right. and those guys are going to pick up Shohei Otani. They're going to bring him to the Bronx, and the Yankees will be back on top in no time. We'll talk in another month <laughs> yes, or so. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will. <laughs> uh, so, um, Karen, um, yes. what's going on at the, at the food bank? Uh, we're just gearing up for our golf tournament, which is mm -hmm. Sunday, September 24th. From the Hands Food Bank is having its first um, golf tournament, thanks to the generosity of Litchfield County Sports, which is another um, show that is on here. Tim Gaffney is putting that on for us, um, and all uh, proceeds benefit us. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, we have over 120 golfers. Mm. Um, we've got some great prizes. We've got a brand new car, all kinds of stuff. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Some great sponsors. We're really excited about that. Um, if anybody's interested in just joining us for dinner that night, just give us a call. I will put you on the list. It's $50. You could come that evening and enjoy all the raffle prizes. We've got some great raffle prizes. Um, we've got um, some tires, a set of tires uh, we've got. We've got uh, Snap-on tools, over $600 worth of wow. them. We've got all kinds of amazing things, um, and a, a beautiful Adirondack chair and a bunch of things. So we're excited for that. Um, and then just to remind everybody that at Friendly Hands Food Bank, every day, weather permitting, and I say that because tomorrow it's going to rain, um, we put out a free food um, set of racks, and it has all kinds of fresh vegetables, fruits, um, breads, and Ooh. all kinds of stuff. And this is free to everybody and anybody. It's open to the public. So we don't want anyone to go hungry. If you don't want to sign up at the food bank to, you know, get or you feel maybe you don't qualify or whatever, we, every day, weather permitting, we have the two racks outside. Stop, pull over your car, get Get out, take a few things, and go home. No one should be hungry. www.fhfb.org. Awesome. Very awesome. nice. Excellent. And I'll be there to help you out. Yes, at yes. the golf tournament. I yes. I will. I am very excited, and we, we got your dinner. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have a blast. I'm really just going for the dinner. She's going. <laughs> <laughs> and if any of the golfers need caddies, I'm available. There you go. I All get right. to drive the cart. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Well, do you be golfing? No. <laughs> I will definitely try. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a golfer either. I like to drive you the car. You see dwarf on golf? Like <laughs> back in the day? So. And um, speaking of golfing, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a swing here uh, with our guest this evening, Mr. Mark Pernicki, uh, who is with the Torrington Area Youth Service Bureau. Uh, and, and Mark... We yes, wanted sir. to have you on today because part of what we do here at uh, City Views is share information with the community about the stakeholders uh, that are making things happen in our city and in our region. And your particular um, task with the Youth Services Bureau is very critical, especially at this time when there's so many issues <coughs> involving youth. Yes, sir. And they're growing up in a different environment mm -hmm. than what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't even imagine the challenges that, that you're dealing with on, on a daily basis. Can you share uh, a little bit with our audience uh, about the Youth Services Bureau and how um, their organization works in the community? Sure. We run lunch bunches yeah, at Toronto Middle School, mm -hmm. Southwest. Mm -hmm. We run an after school program at Southwest. Mm -hmm. And we do numerous, numerous programs. We do family with service needs. We are constantly in and out of the schools. Mm. Plus the um, camps. Uh, um, that, that is more, that's more the Winchester. Okay. But we do absolutely everything from if I get a phone, if we get a phone call mm -hmm. saying one of our children we know mm -hmm. needs someone to talk to or is in crisis, mm -hmm. we go to it all the way from, you know, we used to do the summer youth employment program. Right. We do it. We do it all. 
uh -huh. social emotional learning. Uh, we're, we're partnered with the YMCA, uh -huh. or, uh, we're a branch of the YMCA, but we're actually working closely with them right now because we're starting that new program called Be Active, okay. mm. which is going to be really, really good for the kids. Right. Um, last year, the ki it was tough getting these kids down there and getting them tame. Mm -hmm. But I tell you and what, you know, there, there were tears. Mm -hmm. right. There mm -hmm. were tears. <coughs> and uh, at the end of it, we didn't want the kids to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're absolutely amazing. Well, I imagine coming out of the pandemic, you know, for two years yes. of the pandemic where we were all told, you know, to be yeah. home and stay home, that, you know, school yes. wasn't even in person, that coming out of that and going yes. into launching this program yes. was, it was a task in yeah. itself. Um, it's, it, adults had a hard time interacting. And we have like suitcases full of <laughs> knowledge and know-how. You know, when you talk about a kid that's in sixth grade, that's been in his room since third. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he, you know, he's out in public, she's out in public. It's, it's challenging. You, yeah. know, you just have to have a lot of patience, love, concern, right. and care. Yeah. yeah. Now I know you do a lot of work. Uh, my good friend Michelle Anderson, who works with uh, Ed Advance, I know you yes. do a lot of work with them. Can you talk a little bit about that relationship and that partnership? Yes, uh, Michelle's wonderful. Um, I'm very lucky to be working with her. Mm -hmm. um, she appreciates my humor. <laughs> and, I'm uh, glad she does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I, it's I do. A, I'm a youth and homelessness family outreach mm -hmm. worker, mm -hmm. and I, I, we partner with Ed Advance. So I get people placed through like the Torrington Housing Authority or if they have a decent job, I, I make sure through the McKinney, Anto, the McKinney Vento Act that their children, if they start at Vogel Wetmore yeah. and they become homeless, yeah. no matter where, where they go in the community, mm -hmm. um, they, they will stay there mm -hmm. and we'll make sure we pr provide transportation mm -hmm. and their educational needs are met. Oh wow! That's and that's great. so that's important. That's, awesome. yeah. that's, that's so great. important to and not we, uproot them. And we do it all because yeah. Yeah. We, we help everybody with their either Section Eight applications, um, get it, get it all done, get all the documentation, and all the way from getting them into shelter, doing the application. Mm -hmm. um, personally, you know, I don't say I don't like to say I, but I help people move. Um, Torrington News Service Bureau gets them appliances, because mm -hmm. many times these people have nothing. Yeah. So mm. um, I'll put out on Facebook, hey, does anybody have a kitchen table? I, you know what, I'm so glad you're talking about that, because you know, we get calls all the time for, we've got a bed, we've got a yes. stove, we've got a this yes. and that, and I, we don't, we physically yes. at the food bank do not have a place to store it. Yep. But when I get those calls, I think what I'll do is I'll contact you from yeah, now on, and amazing. then hook it up. As a matter of fact, they've got a freezer, a refriger two refrigerators, a range, and all of that right now that yeah. are waiting a home. So maybe you can that, help me with that. That's amazing. Absolutely. Well. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you very that's much. That's great. That's no, very kind. I, mean, I love it. But you know what? But this is, I mean, what you guys do <coughs> with the Youth Service Bureau, Bureau is so important in your another agency and another area that's helping um, not only the youth, but families in, in yeah. Torrington and Northwest Connecticut. And it's just yeah. so crucial to have services like that available. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely great. Um, a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, I went into the high school for a program with, um, I believe, the Navy. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of those, it was geared towards juniors and seniors, and a lot of those juniors and seniors could not, we had an obstacle course set up and a lot of them couldn't do pull-ups, sit-ups, and yes. a lot of these activities. So um, your program of getting them active and be active, I think yeah. is vitally important because yeah. um, again, we be, we got into an age where kids only knew, this is the only muscle they use so, yes. for gaming yes. um, and not, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Physical. Physical, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So and, and, Jack, and Jack really said it all when you know, he said kids are really up against it. You know, we see kids that haven't had success in six, seven years, they're 13, 14 years old, and it, everything that we do is strength-based, so we find something, especially in our family service needs program, find something that they're good at, right. anything, mm -hmm. because success translates mm -hmm. and, 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 and it, it goes sure everywhere. Goes. Right. And one thing I always say, I was like, you know, you can't better yourself just on the field, 
you know, because I have a lot of some athletes I work with, mm -hmm. you have to better yourself at home, better yourself mm -hmm. in school, because you're all going to move together. You can't split right. your success and, and moving forward. Right. You have to move all together. And the things you aren't good at, that cream rises up. Right. And yeah. they become decent yeah. at them because they get confident. Right, right. right. Building confidence is important. Right. Very much so. Yeah. So anyone that's uh, watching this program right now, Mark, uh, how can they get in touch or make a referral to the Youth Services Bureau? Well, I tell you, I think everybody has my cell phone number. <laughs> so it's 1-860-459-4559. Uh, um, you need any referrals? So it's um, direct. Uh, I mean, you just, <laughs> direct. I, it's right there, yes. Repeat absolutely. that number again. 1-860-459-4559. One more time. one 459 Shoot me a text, and uh, I'll get right to you. He's very we, prompt. We get right to you. He is very prompt. Is. And and you work with uh, Katerina yep. on yes. different things. I love yes. her. Um, she's amazing. And, of course, the Y. Uh, yep. You know, everybody at the Y, it, you know, it's a great group. So, yeah, so hats off to you because what the work you're doing is crucial. Um, but I bet you it's tough sometimes, you know, to some of the situations you go in, and I understand that. And, you know, um, we're going, very lucky to have you. Thank you. I'm actually going to a family service needs case um, in about five minutes. There oh, you wow. go. Yeah. Yes. So when you leave. So Mark Pernicki, Torrington Area Youth Services Bureau, thank, thank you, you for being our guest. Thank you. Thank you thank for you coming. You are our first guest of the you entire are. season. Look at that. In person, right? <laughs> so, and uh, we're very happy to have you. Yes. And uh, we look forward to getting updates from you as we go along. We'll have you back again. Absolutely. Thank you very Definitely. much. Awesome. I thank you. Thank Feel you. free to anytime. call in anytime if yeah. you want to give us an update as well. Oh, really? Yeah. The number's right on the screen. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. All right. You. Bye now. And uh, watch Wait. out. Uh, watch out your neck. Let's grab, yeah. your, let's grab your mic there. Sorry. <laughs> but I think it's about that time. It's about that time. I know that time. And we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors and let them know how much we appreciate them. And uh, first on the list is, let me get this back here on the phone. Oh, look at you. I know. Behind uh, the, I know. Behind <coughs> the eight ball. <laughs> Want to give a big shout out to Toth Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. He can be reached at 860-496-7771. Contact email at tothins at optonline.net. Also, Mel Brickman and Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite Number 1 in Torrington. You better call Mel. You better call Mel. <laughs> at 860-307-1128. His contact information is healthmarkets.com backslash local dash health dash I N S. <laughs> also, Brooks, Todd, and McNeil Insurance, located at 69 Water Street, Torrington, Connecticut, keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. That's a long time. Their contact information is 860-598-8753. And uh, also at brookstoddmcneil.com. And lastly, Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, pediatric care for over 50 years. Their contact information is 860-482-8177. And their um, website is TorringtonPediatrics.com. So we want to thank our big city sponsors. Woohoo! All right, uh, I like it. For taking a pause for the cause. We right thank here you. At city View. We do all thank you, and we encourage everyone to visit them. Um, you know, if it, if it's uh, you know something that you need, or refer them along and mention them often. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I do believe we're approaching. What's that I smell? Something's mm. cooking. Mm. Is it? <laughs> ah, there's something in the air. Something's cooking. Mm. I think something's mm. cooking. Did she miss her cue? I did. She did. She miss her cue? <laughs> Not Are quite we, yet. I, I think, think she has one more minute. I think she has one more minute to dial. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so we don't smell it yet. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Karen, and she'll be calling it. You have such a way with words. <laughs> oh, I tell you, she has to update us on yeah, she does. Uh, her, her trip to Nashville. Yes. Uh, oh, Nashville. Yes. Yep, she went out there, and it wasn't for pleasure. It was for, because she was working mm. um, on a national um, <coughs> thing that she was doing. Um, so. I think it's with her um, education, child yes. education Early committee. childhood Early education, education. Yes. correct? Which Absolutely. Is, which is a uh, quite a um, uh, relevant topic here, especially since we just uh, had a conversation with Mark with the uh, Youth Services Bureau. Um, and uh, let, let's be honest, uh, young people today are facing challenges like never before. And it's a whole different world. It's a whole different world. It really world. is. It really, really is. I mean, you have a little one. You have two little, two. well, not little, little ones. You have a little one and an older one, but yeah. I mean, they're, they're young. My kids are all grown. And, uh, but the, the challenges that they're facing with school and with what's going on, and like you said, you know, uh, constantly on the phone, I mean, that's mm -hmm. got to be difficult because that's not how I grew up, you it, know? It's very difficult. Um, so much has, has changed and fallen through the cracks, I, I think. Um, you, know, you know, parents have to work harder nowadays. Um, everything's gone up, so parents are spending more hours at work. Mm -hmm. So what's raising their kids? The gaming system. And mm -hmm. And, you know, it, not to say that anything's bad with that because you have to do what you have to do, but it's like, do you want them out there on the streets, which is bad, or do you, would you rather them at home and buy all the gaming system for them so or they stay at home? Or social media. Or social, social media. Social media, which can be such a, you know, a, a way If of my son asks me one more time for <laughs> Snapchat, <laughs> I'm going to flip my lid. <laughs> It's a weekly, it's a weekly question. He's in eighth grade. Mom, can I have, and he, they're slick. This is can great. I have Snapchat so that I can talk with my friends? I'm like, call them, text them. <laughs> but no, you Old are school. not getting Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You're not getting Snapchat. I'm now, not giving me, in. Does he have, and I'm, ju I'm just curious, like, does he have Facebook, Instagram? Does he have any of that? He does does he not. have, this is good. So does he have a phone? He does have a phone. Okay, yes. now is he limited in what he can do? But he will ask you what he can download. So yes, he asked I me like what this. he can download. Um, Beautiful. And uh, believe it or not, up until so he just turned thirteen, and believe it or not, Google and I guess the world thinks that thirteen is old enough where the parent doesn't have to have um, parental, parental controls. Parental controls. Really. And I, I'm like, they took me off, and I'm like, nope, I'm getting back on there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he, so he still has to ask me, you know, if he wants to download something, if he wants to buy something. Um, I still check his phone mm. constantly, um, his t the time on his phone. So they took away, he used to have a time limit, and they took that away because they took away the parental control. But I take the phone away now, mm -hmm. physically, yeah, physically, instead of it just shutting off. There's I nothing better than that is to yeah. physically, you know, so you have control over it, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know if she, I guess she may, might have forgot about it. No, I, I spoke with her, so oh. she sh should be. She, she uh, should be she dialing should. them? You know what, though? It was, it's interesting because I remember back in the day um, when we got sent to our room, that was punishment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nowadays, you send your kid to the room and it's like, hey, it's a oh, party. Listen, you send them to the room, you better go in there and <laughs> unplug every single thing and take it out of that room. If you do not, then, you know, you didn't, you didn't punish them. No. Well, I, I, I can, yeah, I can remember that was, <clears throat> if it came down to getting a whooping or getting restriction, Give me the whooping, because the whooping's <laughs> only going to last, you know, five, ten minutes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that restriction stuff, up in your room for yep. a week, a you can't go out. Yeah. yeah, man, that was like Didn't torture. Didn't have TV yes. or no, this or that. that no, was, yeah. no. The only thing we had was Farrah Fawcett's poster on the wall to look <laughs> That's at. That's it. That's it. Maybe um, a Michael Isn't Jackson that, poster. Isn't that funny? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I can't. I remember that going in. Uh, how about, how many, this will say how old I am. Uh, remember when you had... Um, like you had a, a tape player, yeah. and you wanted, you were trying to record that yes. song on the radio, oh, yeah. and you had to wait, and the yes. song came on, you had to hurry up and push record and play at the same time and, and, and get it on. And there. you had to make and sure you push stop before the, stop, the, the yeah, DJ. The, yes, yes. Started oh, speaking. My, remember that? Yes. Oh my God, we just dated ourselves. Listen, I have a collection oh of cassettes, and my son looked at me and he said, "What are those?" <laughs> you know what's interesting about that though? We were all experiencing the same thing while living in different parts of the country. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You know, which just shows yeah. you how. Can you, know, you imagine? Well, I think it's time. Okay. Do you do you smell something? I, good? I, I smell All something right. cooking. I, I, I smell what the shell is cooking. <laughs> okay, hang on. I push and then I go. Resume. Uh, read on the redial. Is it? <laughs> Wait, which one is it? The first or second button? Hit the one on the side first. Yeah. Okay. So I hit that one. And then resume. And then resume. resume. I don't see resume. Look at me. Oh. Over here, because I did redial. New call. Re I don't want to hit it, because if I hit it and she's not there and I hang her up, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I got that one. Then let's go there. <laughs> That's not the one. No. Oh, we got we. Oh, Michelle, hold on. How many don't people does it take one. to figure out a phone system? Oh, I hung her up. Uh oh. Oh. She's still Michelle? there. Michelle. I got it. It came on. All there right. I'm so sorry, Michelle. It was me. I The button didn't light up green. The resume is there. I'm pushing all kinds of buttons. I apologize. Oh, yeah. She's always pushing buttons. <laughs> well, I work with her quite a bit, and I know the buttons that she can and cannot push. Well, next time you might want to give us a heads up or a warning, okay? Nope. Nope. You got to learn that on your oh, own. My God. Oh, my God. Right. See? She's got my back. See? <laughs> You ladies aren't right. You know, I'm like. <laughs> but we're not wrong. <laughs> never wrong. Never, never wrong. wrong. Jack, yes. Jack, yes. Just for clarification. Yes. Women must stick together and have each other's back. That's right. At all times. So, yep. On is that it? note, what's cooking? <laughs> what's cooking? What is cooking? Well, glad Straight to have you back. Cook. Glad to have you back. I'm excited to be back. Um, it was a great trip. Um, we had all of our states and two territories represented. Wow. We were just talking about um, how challenging it is for young people today. And the work that you're doing right now, I think, is uh, just on high priority. Because we got to get this stuff right if we're going to have a society that's functional going forward. And I think there are so many um, families and kids today that are just struggling, not only you know financially, but trying to find their place in their communities and trying to understand what it is that they can do to move up the economic ladder to find that place where they can enhance the quality of their lives. No, I think that, you know, and I believe that we had this conversation last week a bit too before I before I left. Um, and our kids are in a, in a definite trying time, um, you know, not only in their lives, but in our country's lives. You know, I was just reading, an, um, I was just reading an article about Matthew McConaughey, of all people, and he had said how he didn't let his son get on social media until he was 15 years old. And, you know, as much as we don't govern and do things because, you know, the famous folks do or do, and I don't, I do find it very interesting that a lot of folks do not let their kids, if, I mean, especially if they are in the limelight, um, Jennifer Gardner and a variety of other people, they don't let their kids on social media. And I know that we were having that conversation last week, and then at my conference, that was really one of the top subjects was about limiting screen time mm -hmm. and about how that is, that is truly affecting our children. Although it was also very clear to state that this generation of child will be brilliant. Their minds will be brilliant, but they might not have the, the social skills that other generations did, but they will be a brilliant, brilliant generation. That's interesting. I, I uh, saw... Uh, Matthew McConaughey this morning and they were talking about that very subject. You saw him in person? Yeah, and <laughs> you know, so that's, I do, I do hope, and I understand, right, we're all different, we all have different situations in our lives and, you know, our, our work life and our home life, every door is different. It doesn't matter what street you're on. Right. Um, but I do hope that parents, you know, take a step and, and really pay attention to the fact that a lot of the screen time, especially the unhealthy screen time, really should be limited. And there, there are people out there that have have scales of like, 
what how many hours is too many hours um and and then your content right i mean mm-hmm. we grew up in the generation of sesame street and the electric company um Fraggle Rock. but yet yeah. you know that was Boy. only on for a half an hour and then maybe another half hour and then you were outside mm-hmm. um i grew up so with it, is, it is vastly different <laughs> You grew up with what? Bugs Bunny on Saturday mornings. And Woody Woodpecker. And Woody yeah, Woodpecker. I... And they were blowing things up and <laughs> shooting things and everything and Yosemite Sam and everything. And, and I came out okay. But that hey, was look, what we gotta... had. Right. But you, you're talking bad about Elmer Fudd. And I don't know if that's right. But, <laughs> but I mean, that, that is very, that's to the point, right? Right. We had, Saturday mornings were cartoons and yes, cereal and only for a cartoons, couple hours. and that was a treat. That was yeah. that was you know, to look, have a breakfast well, and watch TV and cartoons until right, noon. Like, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And now I think I think, and this is just my my personal opinion. You know, is that a lot of times now with the, with society is using um, videos, video games, and social media, and all of that as a babysitter. Um, I, I noticed today. Um, a parent came in, the child could have been no older than two, maybe three years old, and they just hand them the cell phone with the, you know, cartoon or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, on the, as, a, you know, while they're trying to transact business. And, I mean, there's good and bad to that. But, I mean, like you said, right. there have to be limits. Yeah. Um, right. And by no, by no means am I casting stones because I don't no. know what, you know, like I said, you don't know. I mean, being a single parent, is, it's challenging. Right. Um, being, a, being, you know, having two parents is challenging. Um, you know, but we, I, I do think that, and, and that was really part of our, our three-day conversation um, was exactly that, was, you know, it, social media has its good and its bad, but we really need to pay attention um, to, to what those limits are um, and what content your children is, is partaking in if you are allowing them on on the internet or social media or the world wide web because you know there is a dark web yeah. um, that a lot of folks don't recognize that their kids might be able to get into and I, I I kid you not I would ask my children how to figure something out because I didn't know because that's just not what I grew up with right and my grandkids are going to know much more than my kids and I yeah so you know generationally we are we are supposed to be smarter than the generation prior to us. But there are some common sense things that I don't think that our generation should should sway from. And, and you know, if you have the ability, if you have the ability for family time, that's it. If you have the ability for whatever those quality times. Karen, you were talking about it last week about sitting around having dinner around the table. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe once a week it is. Um, you know, I think getting back to some grassroots and what's important. And, and you know what? God bless those children that don't have parents. Um, but... And, you know, and, and that's, that's something totally different, you well, know. But, and but I think the only So that's just not, is, not where we are here, right. Right, and I think, too, that we have to place the onus where it does belong, though, with the, and I'm going to expand this, okay, with the parents slash guardian or caregiver. Um, that it falls into that, that bucket there at home, wh- wh- whatever your home looks like. Maybe your grandmother's raising you or your grandparents Correct. or your aunt, your uncle, whatever. Whatever that is, we have to put that back on the parent, guardian, or gear- caregiver, you know, to, to set those boundaries and have that there so these children can go forth and succeed. It has to start somewhere rather than just the kids getting to school and then going into like you said, uh, you know, where now the teachers are becoming babysitters because th- these kids haven't have not been exposed to that. It has to start somewhere, and it has to start at home, no matter what your home looks like. Right, right. and if you are in a situation where that's not possible, there's people out there that can help you. Help, exactly. Youth and, Service and that, Bureau. And that was really, you know, and that was really part of another piece of conversation was trying to figure out how we offer wraparound services. Right. right. Um, and to recognize and, you know, maybe prematurely on our call last week, but, you know, the conversation about, you know, not being afraid to let birth to three and home visitation and being honest with your pediatrician and your doctor. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, like really having those wraparound services that can can meet you where you are, right. um, because, quite frankly, sometimes you just can't get out of the house to, you know, to this appointment or that appointment. Um 
so, you know, like I said, you know, with 50 states and two territories, it was an impressive group um, to be sitting with. And then I, you know, I know that most of us are, as we talk about social media, right, kind of contradiction of what I just saying. But um, on Instagram some bit ago, we had uh, DJ Pryor, who is a comedian, and he was the, he was the gentleman, the African-American gentleman that was sitting on the couch with his son. And they were having a conversation, and his son was two. Oh, my God, I love that. That is my so, favorite thing in the world. So DJ Pryor was actually the keynote address speaker at my conference on Friday. Oh, my goodness. Um, and he was talking about how, how he became the, of who he was and that he was born into a family of a mom who was 13 and a dad who was 15. Wow. Wow. And about how... He knew he did not have a relationship with his father, but yet he has three children, and it was important for him to break the mold and to be a better father than what he was unable to have. Right. Um, and then, he, you know, he went on and on and on, and some of his words were just so poignant. And, and he said, he goes, my mission was not kind of to let me, to let my situation bring me down, but it was to give me the strength to lift me up. Mm, love that. And he said, I didn't use it as an excuse. I used it as encouragement. I used it as, I know I can be better. Mm -hmm. I know what I lost, and I know my kids will not lose that. Mm. Um, and, and you know, and he, he was very clear to say, society had already put him in a mold. Mm -hmm. yep. And he needed to break the mold. And, and I will tell you, I've never heard a young man so, so wise in his years. Um, about fatherhood and experiences, life experiences. I, I can't say I've ever experienced his life, whether it be culturally, parental, the likes. I, I, I can't say I will ever walk in his shoes or experience what he experienced. Um, but bless him for giving back, and he's a philanthropist as well, and he's, he's partnered with the Hunt Institute, which was a part of the, which was the group that was sponsoring my conference, okay. because he believes in their mission of truly setting the foundation and the groundwork for children as early as we can to ensure that that reinforcement is on the front end and we don't have to look at them on the back end. Well, and, and that is, I don't, I, I think it's the, it's the correct guy. He's the one where he was with the two year old, they were sitting on the couch and yeah, and they were like talking at the television. Yeah. Ex and it was, it's absolutely hysterical but it brings a tear to your eye, but it's, it's, it's so relevant. And I love that it's all over TikTok and all over. And if it, you get a chance for our viewing audience, if you get a chance to look at that, watch it. It's not only uh, funny, but it's absolutely heartwarming. But how poignant is that, that it's, it really is, you know, that we could all uh, uh, communicate with one another if we just try. Right. Well, and that was kind of what he was saying. You know, his, that, that son that was two years old when he filmed that is now five. Oh, it's amazing. And, and his son is now like this international star. Yeah. And, but he said that what, what for him after he, after he had filmed that and he had watched it, it was really about recognizing that all we need to do is just take five minutes and sit down mm -hmm. and just listen and, and pay attention because we often don't think that necessarily children can communicate with us or we don't get their cues. And he said, you know what? I might not have really known what he was talking about. Right. He goes, but we were communicating. And he knew that his dad was taking five minutes and sitting next to him and was listening. And he said, I, you know, as he, he didn't have that as a child. And it was, it was so vitally important that he gave his children that. Um, his name is DJ Pryor, I tell you. Um, he was just the most honest and genuine young man um, that that you that you could probably meet in, in and his wisdom was brilliant so right. super super nice guy I can't say that I've watched a lot of his comedy my kids knew who he was um, <laughs> but what he's doing for breaking the mold on stereotypes and parenting and fatherhood I thought was 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 worthy of you know giving him a shout out that's awesome well Michelle, we are uh, running close to the top of the hour, but before we go, um, I wonder uh, how you feel about parents getting involved in the curriculum. Um, I hear there's a lot of talk about that, and I'm perplexed, to be honest with you, because I'm not sure where you draw that line. 
you have educators who have you know years of experience um, and you know work you know daily on uh, you know curriculum issues and um, just what is your, your your personal feeling on that level of involvement and you know where those uh, lines of demarcation cross you know, I have a husband that is an assistant principal. I had a grandmother that was an educator. I was teaching preschool. I have taught high school. Um, my personal opinion is I think there's a, a, there is a, there's an appropriate way to be involved in what happen, what's happening in your child's educational system. And they're called Board of Education meetings, running for the Board of Education, <laughs> going to your parent-teacher conferences, going to open houses, getting involved, starting a PTO or a PTA if you don't have one. Um, all of those things would be appropriate manners. Knowing who those educators are and, and build that communication. I think that one of the most underappreciated positions in, in our state and in our country is an educator. Um, they, are, they are yelled at, screamed at, disrespected. They, I mean, that's just the beginning and the tip of the iceberg. And they are responsible for taking care of our children when they are in their in their classrooms, they are responsible for being, you know, I don't want to say they're taking away a mother or a father's position, but they are the ones who are being trusted with the child and they are the ones that are educated and certified. And And I think that we owe it to them to, to pay attention and to respect them. And if there is something that we as a parent have a concern with. I think that there is a respectful and appropriate manner to address that. I don't think social media is it. Um, I do believe that having an honest one-to-one -one conversation with that educator first is what is the way to go. And then if you don't feel that you get a resolve, then there's chains to do that. Um, like I said, Board of Education meetings and so forth and so on. Um, I trust the curriculum, don't get me wrong, like there were things that I didn't like when I was in school, but I did it and, and it probably made me a better person. I don't know if I'll ever use geometry in my life, but you know, I might not have liked that, but yet other people do. And we all need a well-rounded curriculum to better us and prepare us for society. Um, we have school choice in the state of Connecticut. So if, you know, if your child is a musician and you choose a magnet school or a charter school, like we have uh, VOAG, VOTEX, we have all of these things for options if it's something that you don't like. But I, you know, I do believe that we have to entrust on decisions. And I think that social media has really destroyed what factual curriculum is being taught in our classroom. Well, with that being said, Michelle, uh, we want to welcome you back home. And uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation because uh, our children's future is at hand. Absolutely. And, you know, I do think that it's important. And I know that Karen and I were chatting about getting some guests on there. You know, maybe we bring on um, a Board of Education member or a teacher and, and, and really start that conversation if that's what's important to our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I believe that this group, and the one that we've been a part of for a very long time now, Jacques, is really a group for the people to, to have them have an opportunity to discuss what's important to them. I agree. I agree. Okay. Um, so, well, we'll thank uh, you all so very much. Our time goes very fast. It does. And, and you all have a, a, a wonderful and safe evening. You thank too, you. Michelle. We look too. forward to talking to you next right. week. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> so as we prepare for the close of the show, we want to give our round of shout-outs. And we want to start out with Dawn's Getaway, located at 24 Winstead Road in Torrington, Connecticut. Also, Christie's Restaurant, located at 545 Winstead Road in Torrington. Health Insurance Services, located at 438 Main Street in Torrington. Wall, Wall and Fruenhofer at 117 Main Street. Hello, Chris Wall. Also, Soul Latina Cafe located at 31 Hungerford Street in Torrington. Jimmy's Store at 1238 East Main Street in Torrington. Five Points Art Center at 855 University Drive in Torrington, Connecticut. And lastly, to George's Music at 905 New Harrington Road in the fine city of Torrington, Connecticut. 
And once again, shout out to our big city sponsors, Toth Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street. Better protection, better value. They can be contacted at 860-496-7771. Also, Mel Brickman and Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite 1 in Torrington, Connecticut. You better call <laughs> Mel. His number is 860-307-1128. Brooks Todd and McNeil Insurance, located at 69 Water Street in Torrington, Connecticut, keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. You can contact them at 860-598-8753. And lastly, Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, pediatric care for over 50 years. Their number is 860-482-6177. Excuse me, that's 8177. So, so to close, you know what I would like to talk about? How about the WOW Forum? Oh, I know some I beautiful it. women who are going to be in there. Wow. Right there. The wow. WOW Forum on Friday, October 6th yep. at the beautiful Warner Theater. Yes, yes, yes. Um, We are going to have, this is by the Chamber of Commerce, an amazing day for women, um, entrepreneurs, um, business owners, um, anybody, any woman that wants to be surrounded by. That want to be wow. Exactly. That not only want to be wowed, but are wow material. Yes. So this is amazing. Um, one of the speakers mm. <laughs> happens to be sitting right next to me. Well, uh, who is that? Now, I can't wait because I am the mistress of ceremonies. Oh, and yes, I will are. be, well, the MC, And uh, so I will be doing that. And I will be taping uh, some radio commercials coming this Friday um, to do that. So I'm, I can't wait. We've got a great lineup of speakers. What, what are you excited about? I'm just excited to be among a lot of uh, other women and speakers yes. who are just wow and amazing themselves. Yes. Um, and to speak and share my knowledge. And we can't wait. We can't. And how about you? Because you are the chairman of the board. <coughs> yeah, I am. Um, the I Chamber am. of Commerce. I so am. all three of us are here yes, involved. Yes. So it's a great event every it year. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of it. Um, but I, I think the Chamber does an amazing job with it. They do. And just in case you're wondering what WOW stands for, it is an acronym for Women of, of the, the world. world. And we certainly have the top of the crop here in our fine neck of the woods. So um, we encourage you to check that out. And uh, to get more information, you can check, go to info at chamberofcommerce.org. That sounds fabulous. Yeah. Well, another uh, evening filled with great conversation yes. all about Northwest Connecticut. Thank you for joining in and tuning in to see us, and we'll see you again next week. See you next week. Bye now. See you, see you, see you.